Starship USS Ed oh, uh, by the way, I, I, I must tell you that before I get into this, uh, we ran a little bit over on time, and George Christie will not be with us tonight, but we'll play that tape in the future because it's interesting. Uh, the Starship USS Enterprise heads on yet another journey in Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan. And I want you to welcome our movie critic who recently saw the film, Michael Medved. Hello, Mike. Tell us about it. Well, first of all, I think it should be explained that uh, the wrath of Khan is not as one might expect about an irate uh, delicatessen counterman. Um, the Khan, Take a number. <laughs> right. Khan, Khan is, in fact, uh, played not by Fernando Lamas, but by Ricardo Montalban. And uh, he's, he's wonderful in the style of the best kind of villains from the old Batman TV show. Mm -hmm. And if one enjoys that sort of high camp uh, fun, and I found that I rather did, um, the did film is, is, is quite entertaining. I should say, though, I should have a, a very strong confession here in the style of the old House on American Activities Committee, uh, which is that I am not now, nor have I ever been a Trekkie. Uh, I don't think I, I saw Star Trek maybe twice on TV when it was running. So uh, a lot of this was, was somewhat uh, terra incognita for me. I was journeying boldly where no man has dared to go before, as they say in the movie. But uh, uh, having seen the previous film, this was a tremendous improvement. You, you can't, I mean, uh, that, that f everyone went to see that film and it made a lot of money. Oh, yes. But everyone hated it. The first one, the original mm -hmm. Star Trek. But yeah. The Wrath of Khan is, is a big improvement. Different director, different producer, different script. Not so overwhelmed with special effects. And, and the whole thing pretty much works. Um, particularly if, if you are a, a Trekkie or a fellow traveler. Uh, I think that there's sort of a ritualized setting here. It's, it's almost like uh, watching a kabuki drama where they all stand around and overact in the same way. And they're all <laughs> wandering through their roles just in the familiar manner. And it's really rather diverting. And if you want to see some of this uh, overacting, we have, we have a clip that illustrates it Wonderful. beautifully. Wonderful. Roll it, please, Terry. Con bloodsucker. You're going to have to do your own dirty work now. Do you hear me? Do you! Kirk. Kirk, you're still alive, my old friend. Still. Old friend. You managed to kill just about everyone else, but like a poor marksman, you keep missing the target. Perhaps I no longer need to try, Admiral. You've got Genesis, but you don't have me. You are going to kill me, Khan. You're going to have to come down here. You're going to have to come down here. Well, as, as you can see, you can probably notice some of the tooth marks in the scenery <laughs> at the end of a scene like that. Does Spock die? Does Spock die? I, I hate to give it away, but in, in, yes, he does. And it's treated you with... You mean? Uh, it's treated with such solemnity in the movie. It's oh. hilarious. It's sort of like Siegfried's uh, funeral scene in Goethe Demerung. It's, it's, it's that, that same kind of high seriousness, about ten minutes on screen, oh. with a funeral and the funeral oration. He dies nobly, though. Oh, my. And oh. it's really a relief because Leonard Nimoy... It, partially the film is reminiscent of Rocky III because uh, the, part of the theme is Admiral Kirk. He's now Admiral Kirk, not Captain Kirk. He's retired, and he's on the ground, and they're trying to get him to do one more voyage into space, just like they were trying to do get Rocky to do one more flight and will he do it will he do it and he finally does it and and it's it's sort of funny about this film because uh, almost like the the Star Wars series uh, the film is really nostalgic there's this nostalgic feeling about it uh, there's looking back at this past character the Ricardo Montalban character who was on the TV show and it's very strange that we have this this great sort of nostalgic presentation now set in the future now what's your rating 5.9 it's fun I thought it was going to be higher, Michael. You sounded like you really liked it. I enjoyed it. I didn't like it. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael, very much. And tomorrow night, our guests will be Ernest Borgnine, Christopher Norris from Trapper John, character actor Henry Silva, and author Stephen Birmingham on The Grand Dames. And uh, the remake of the old movie, The Thing, premiered in Hollywood tonight, and our spies reported that this was no ordinary premiere. It's a, a horror movie, and everyone who attended had to wear a scary costume. This being Hollywood, the outfits were a little weird.
I think they all got them on Hollywood Boulevard. Watch this. Good night. <laughs> See you tomorrow night. Just looks like normal clothes. <laughs>